Okay, so we've got Calvin's versus Zap Gaze. We are watching Calvin's uh, uh, blah, blah, blah. Calvin's view here. Looks like he's going for the old Wong, Black Panther, and Zola. You have to share game if you want audio. Oh, that's my fault then. I put the music on, but really quiet. Oh god, now I've lost the view. There we go. Okay, so armor on Baxter building coming down here. Daredevil and Iceman. Good start for Zap Gaze. Of course, it's only for one cube so far. Looks like Calvin's is going to be playing just big deck stuff. Armor as well. Okay. So, whatever happens here, it looks like Calvin's will have to set up on the left into Baxter building to be able to get the Zola. Snatchino, thanks for the Prime. Thanks a lot. I appreciate it. Deb Frost, yes. Um, oh, was that a concede? Ooh, okay. Zaruk Gedzogen. Uh, concede there uh, from Calvin's. Chose to call it a day. Interesting, interesting. Round number two. Calvin's down to nine health. Zapke still chilling on ten. Gonna go zero into Vormi. Makes sense this early on. Just get rid of the one three. Get Vormi opened up for business. And then probably going to be Lizard just dropping down for a guaranteed 5 power without it having to reduce. There's Subterranean though. Everyone's favorite. We're really rocking now. That's hilarious, wasn't it? Armor coming down. That's not really a problem here. It soaks up the Vormir on Zapgaze's side. But all Calvin's needs is one spare location. There's Plunder Castle, the new location. Cosmo onto armor. That's kind of interesting. I'm not sure what I think about that. A snap from, I think, Zap Gaze there. I'm not sure what I think about Cosmo on the armor location here. Although, saying that, in game one, uh, Zap Gaze didn't see too much of, of uh, Carvins' deck. So, maybe that's why the Cosmo landed on Vormir instead. Maximus going out there. So, Zap Gaze really beefing up the left location. But here comes the deadly combo. Shuri into... Oh, my God. Shuri into Red Skull. We might even... It's final turn. Oh, there's nothing. There's nothing. This is the confidence snap time now. If Calvin's wants to bait this, uh, showing Taskmaster, he can actually just snap if he wants. Oh, no. Oh, okay. I concede for Calvin's. That's going to hit him for two cubes. Unfortunate. That is unfortunate. I'll do uh, I'll do that in a bit, Loco. Thank you. Um, okay. Seven cubes for Calvin. Zapgaze still chilling on ten. Early Iceman coming out to cause issues with Shuri. And as you can see, uh, Calvin spamming. That's a bit of a problem. Because Shuri is normally, especially in this deck, something you need on curve. I think Calvin's would have been very happy with everything but Shuri uh, to be hit by Iceman there. Maximus just going to come down into Grand Central. There is a slight advantage here, negative zone-wise, of having cards like Red Skull available. Because that is just one card taking the minus three. So Red Skull will still be uh, 12 in negative zone. Wong coming out now, though. What is Wong's job? I guess for Zola it could be okay, but is it that good? Because now it's going to have to be like Red Skull mid as well. Oh! What what do you even do here? Calvin's is in a problem. Because Grand Central is going to drop an additional card mid. Going Black Panther. Interest. Oh, and there's the Cosmo. We did see the Cosmo in an earlier game as well. This is, um, hmm. Lizard's fine. Oh! Wait, hang on a minute. I think... That is... Quite good. Yeah, I like this play a lot now, actually. Red Skull on the left, like I said. Red Skull, not bad in negative zone. 
Hey, is there any way I can contact my opponent if I can't find them in Discord? Shout in this stream, Smiley. Who's your opponent? Shout in the stream, and if you can um, poke them in Discord, if they can't, after like 10 minutes or so, we'll just DQ. It's fine. Oh, and Zapgaze is going to take the first damage for him this game. So Calvin's is fighting back. Calvin's got away with that one so hard there with the um, the Professor X coming out. And now as we move on to round four, we are going to see that like the players will have good knowledge of the decks. And an Insta Snap coming out there. Okay, this game just got serious. This is going to be a big impact because from round five onwards, the game starts at a snapped state. So it starts at two cubes. You can bet more cubes than your health? No. Oh, you'll never lose. You'll never fight for more cubes than the lowest health person, basically. Armor's going to come down on the left for nowhere. Not really a big deal. Again, odd armor placement here, I think, because uh, Carvins is never going to Zola that location. Bar Sinister, though, coming out now is going to be pretty huge here because... I, I would imagine with this deck. Uh, I don't think this is a good idea. I think with this deck that Calvin's can just win Bar Sinister. I think this could actually be a good. Um, oh, maybe it's Red Skull on the right. And then Taskmaster. Yeah, Red Skull in Bar Sinister now. And then Taskmaster mid. This lines up well for Calvin's. I think an early snap should be quite good. Unless he was the one who snapped first. Thanks a lot for the sub, God of War. God of Raw, sorry. I appreciate it. Oh, Red Skull costs six. Apologies. Yeah, so this is going to have to be... Um, it's going to have to be Maximus for 14. And then just hope 14's enough mid. Don't forget Cosmo. Well, worst case, Calvin's can Red Skull mid. <gasps> now that was a good play. Really tricky turn because you just don't know what's going to go on with those Nightcrawlers. And I think that should just be game, right? Calvin's literally can't play a card because of Ebony Maw. So that looks like... A con uh, yeah, retreat. Two cubes go in there. Calvin take another two damage. This is looking really rough. Also, for anyone listening... In future, when you're in the battle room, can you share game, not screen, please? Just so we can get audio. That's my fault. I didn't mention it earlier. Okay. Das Hub. Coming out there for Gamora. Kicking into Calvin. Another early snap. Was that a double snap? We're playing for all of the marbles here. Four cubes on the line. If Calvin loses this, Zapgaze is the winner and will move on. Yeah, that's the max. Five cubes. The very rare odd cube number. There you go. Yeah, you should be able to report your scores on the website, guys. There should be an option somewhere. Variants on the right are cut off. I mean, sure. Okay. So far, though, Calvin's is looking okay. The Wong always a bit of a danger. Because now there's Wong and then either Shuri. I actually would prefer to see Wong, Black Panther, and then just like Taskmaster or Gamora. With Cosmo already down though. Maybe it's supposed to be... Huh. Let's see what happens on the Eternity range here. How to report on the... Guys, is there, there must be a way to report on the site. Does Has anyone reported a game yet? Let me see. Oh, wait, wait, wait. No, that's my... Yep, yeah, that's my fault. That's my fault. 
You should be able to report now. That's my fault. I didn't click go. I didn't click go. My bad. You can report now, right? Right, sorry. I've not been watching what's going on here. Go. It's been many years since I've ran a tournament, okay? Enchantress coming out on Wong. That's a bit of a big deal. Because now I think Black Panther, yeah, he's not going to really get the job done. So this is a big, big, big question. Oh, Vibranium, Vibranium, Vibranium. And Maximus. I like this play a lot. It's just where... How many Vibraniums you put in at Das Hub? Gonna go for three. Oh, okay. Zap Gaze went all left. Is this gonna be enough though? Vibranium. It's not enough. Calvin's clawed this back. Five cube damage going over to Zap Gaze, and suddenly we've got a game. This is actually insane. The back and forth is ridiculous. Who <laughs> would return? Look, Khan, you know about all these troubles. You know about all this. Round six. Again, starting at the two cube snap. Zapgate's on the right on three cubes. Calvin's on five. So Calvin's like has some wiggle room to retreat. Zapgate's kind of has wiggle room to retreat. Gonna be an early armor there on Atlantis. Uh, Lizard going on the left for Starlet Citadel. These locations will shimmy around, of course, as well. Fist Tower, I don't think from what we've seen, either of the players are running any movement cards. Uh, so Fist Tower should be fairly neutral in this game. Uh, especially with armor as well for Calvin's if he wants it. But these locations are going to shuffle. So Atlantis will go either left or right, which means Lizard or the, um, the Maximus are going to get quite big if they're left alone. Gonna be armor on Fisk Tower for turn four. Again, starts it's a will shuffle. I definitely should have gotten a drink for this. I did not do my caster preparation properly. So it's gonna be armor coming down here. Zap Gaze is gonna almost certainly try and secure mid. Okay, only a Nightcrawler mid, Daredevil on the left. Again, Zap Gaze does run the Professor X. So this will be pretty important to see where things land here. Currently 7, 8, 9, 10 power on the right here for Calvin's, which means an X this turn on Atlantis would not cut it, as it would only be 8. Oh, yeah. Could you grab me a drink, please, Loco? Thank you. There should be one left that's ice cold. Uh, there's only Coke. Oh, well, there's water, but Coke. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh. <laughs> So funny. Okay, so sorry, this was She Hulk coming down mid. I, I like this kind of play a lot because what this does. Oh, the insta retreat. Calvin's not confident, saying, you know what? I can soak two damage and move on and maybe get a better start with no Shuri, with no solid setup for any shenanigans. We are going to move on to round seven. And even though both players can afford to retreat if there are no snaps. The second we see a snap, it's going to be the last round. Do you want us to wait on round two? Um, uh, yeah, if, if you're if you going in round two, Callum, and you want to wait, I can spectate you next if you want. And, spe and share game if you can, Callum. If you're on PC. Cosmo coming down there. Maximus was zeroed anyway, so no extra card draw here for Zap Gaze. Shuri going to come out into mid. So it looks like Calvin's not overly obsessed with mid. New York is going to play an interesting role here in the end game. Wait, Red Skull right. Interesting. Red Skull right when Calvin's could Red Skull left and then Zola left and just not worry about New York. Maybe this is just for the mind games, the unexpected plays. The rooms are full. Uh, five isn't. Five is empty. Oh, red is Red Skull left. Okay. 
Oh, because of Aero. I actually think that was... I, I think Zapgaze did Calvin a, a, a solid there, honestly. Wait, wait. Wait, this... Wait. I don't think this is right. The moves happened beforehand. So this Zola could hit zero. I thought this was fine. Red Skull on the left, Zola. The only problem this ever happens in is if like there's a secondary aero effect, which I don't think there is from what we've seen from Zapgaze so far. Move is shown as processed. Wait, is it? Oh, it's just display. Well, there you go. You learn something new every day. Fair enough. I'm still a little bit surprised that Calvin's wasn't just okay with this. Because the problem with this is, doesn't this only equal arrow on left? Because if Zola hits Red Skull... Oh, I guess arrow's going to have two less power. Okay. Oh my god, Zapgaze retreated. To the one life. Never mind. That got too dicey. That got too dicey. That was spicy and dicey. Round eight, gonna be the final round. Okay, not guaranteed final round, but close. Calvin's does have a retreat as an option. Nexus is quite good for Calvin's again, because Zapgaze so far has not shown that he has Shang-Chi. And if that's the case, Calvin's just goes all in with his big power plays into Nexus. And then that should be okay here. Zapgaze has no option though. With one health left. Yeah, look, you literally can't snap. They can only play for two cubes. Because you can't play for more cubes than your opponent has health. Uh, unless it's like a one and two option, of course. And what is going to happen here? Again, I think with the Nexus, Calvin's has the advantage here. Cause, just because he can go really big. Yeah, there's Shuri coming down. Cosmo... Needs to happen here from Zapgaze. I think Cosmo would have to come down right to give Zapgaze any chance. I'm not even saying that would win, but to give him any chance. Gonna be Enchantress there. Doesn't really do anything except just push some power, which again is understandable. But yeah, there's the big red skull. This might be over for Zapgaze. Thank you. Okay. You need to ask me now or not? Okay, so the arrow, that's a good job. And Zapgaze is going first. Oh, does he Taskmaster? If this is into Cosmo. Oh, if this is into Cosmo. I think I would whiff it and play She-Hulk, personally. Oh, Calvin's agrees. It was Cosmo. Oh my, really well played there from Zapgaze. Really well played. But I think that should be enough. Zapgaze is going to take the loss there. The final point of damage. That was very, very close. And such a great first match uh, on stream there. So a uh, great job, Calvin's. Let me just get rid of this. Uh, that was pretty awesome, honestly, for, uh, for match one. That was great. Uh, let me just sort out match two. Where so uh, this is going to be Callum versus Goss uh, coming out here for... This is going to be a round two match. Remember, you can report your scores on the website once you are done. And let's just get into it. Callum looks like he's going for some kind of a zoo-style list with Misty Knight, Kazar, Mystique, Patriot as well. So let's see how this one goes out. Okay, both players... Stacking early on Mer Island. I imagine just from seeing Korg that we are going to see the Zabu Darkhawk list, or at least some variation of that. Whereas Callum, definitely just going for the more Zoo style. Which might be, you know, mildly beneficial if he didn't just completely whiff on turn two. This is actually a problem. Sentinel actually coming out from Goss or Arwallow. Which is a bit of a surprise. Also, Sentinel, a fantastic card to drop into Nidavalir because it sits at 8 power, which then dodges the uh, the potential Shang-Chi's. 
Could you higher up the volume? Um, maybe. <laughs> One sec. No, <laughs> I can't. I don't really know how, because the volume's max on Discord anyway. Is it really that quiet? Okay, Patriot gonna come down on the right. Versus the Quinjet. This is interesting now. So Quinjet, can't to check what the card does. <laughs> but now they, oh, this is very tricky because Callum, unless he rips like Ultron, doesn't really have a good reason to play Kazar, but the argument is why not play Kazar? So I do think maybe Kazar on Mur Island looks okay or Stark Tower. I mean, I can look at that later. This is definitely a, you know, off the top kind of tournament. Gonna be Rock Slide. So is it Dark Hawk or is it just Rocks? I would still imagine any deck with Rock Slide and um, Corgan is Dark Hawk. And I think now Callum pretty much has to play Blue Marvel right, Wasp right, and then just hope to draw Ultron if he run if he even runs it. But I think that's what I would look at here. Blue Marvel on Stark Tower, Wasp onto Stark Tower, tons of extra stats with that turn five buff, and then draw Ultron is the answer. You'd actually go Wasp into Blue Marvel uh, to actually get the Mystique. Uh, so I've opened for Mystique options for next turn, so you can Mystique the Blue Marvel if needed. But let's see if Callum gets the order lull correct. Wasp, okay. Oh, in Nidavellir. Interesting. I think I would have played it in Stark Tower. But I don't know if Callum's running Ultron or not. Devil, Dinosaur coming out here from Goss on the left uh, location. So Mer Island looks like it's just been overran by uh, dinosaurs. Go. Why was that location sound really loud? Um... Oh, it might actually depend on... Oh! O-M-G. See, that's the thing here. I think Calm actually lost some level of power by not playing Wasp on the right. But Calm now has to work out exactly where he wants to go here. It might even be beneficial to play Ultron left if he assumes he's going to lose it. Looks like he's going to go left. Probably choosing to just believe that Devil Dinosaur is just going to be too big. Maybe this isn't going to be enough for Ultron, but we'll see. Did they change something on the end game screen? I think they changed it. Okay, we don't know what happened there, but there we go. I think they did change some of the animations and noises and stuff. So, it's going to be Mystique and Coulson to buff these up. Is this going to be enough? It looks like Calm's going to be one off on the left. And I think he's going to be a bit off on the right as well. I don't know. Are these drones... What are these drones? Fives? It's not like it's going to be enough. And there we go. It looks like Goss is going to take game number one. Only for two cubes though. So, no snapping really uh, going down yet. That was only round one. Uh, but the problem now is both players have information and the Patriot Ultron style, it, Wasp right would have won or Wasp left would have won. Uh, the Patriot Ultron style is very um, straightforward, right? There's not too much to play around. So Goss now has the ability to just calculate roughly how much power is going to be in each location as a worst and best case scenario. So we are going to go into round two here. Callum does have Sanctum Sanctorum on his side now, though, because I believe, unless we've not we've obviously not seen all the cards, but it, I think Callum is likely to be the only player who has something to get into Sanctum. So what Callum has to do now is to just basically force one other location and then hope to draw Ultron. No, oh, there goes Wasp. Not bad. There goes Zabu, though. And there's Ultron. I, if, if I was Callum, I would snap at this point, actually. You've got Ultron for Sanctum. You've got Patriot behind an Invisible Woman. You even have Onslaught if there are some other shenanigans. I think that was a snap from Callum. It was, and there's a quick retreat. With Zabu gone, you just take the snap, take the cube, take the damage, and move on. Not 
not sure about that load screen. I've not seen that before, but hey ho, we're in. Gonna be into round number three now. Scroll Girl, Misty Knight. I mean, an interesting play here would actually be to go Misty Knight, Visible Woman, and then Scroll Girl in the Invisible Woman, because then you are actually adding three cards to the locations. But we'll see if that actually pays off. Again, similar to the previous match, I don't think the players have any Fisk Tower shenanigans. Is there any argument for not to snap into trying to take... There is, but I think... I, I, I think it would be... In, like, you've got to make that decision as to whether your opponent's going to even play out the last turn or not. So there's Ultron, not bad here. Tricky now, because Invisible Woman actually will stop Callum from winning Asgard. It's going to go Invisible Woman, Squirrel Girl on the right. Some level of surprise factor. Not quite the same level of surprise factor now because of Ultron, but uh, we'll see how it goes. Mystique, not really going to cut it. So it might have to be a pass. Uh, no, you probably play Mystique. And then Blue Marvel Ultron, right? Oh, no, you don't play Mystique then, right? Because Ultron will create a 1-1. One, one. Yeah, basically, none of this matters now. The hand just got awkward. So it's just whatever, whatever Blue Marvel Ultron <laughs> is going to be the thing here. This is a bit of a dicey one here for Callum. And also, when you're having these kind of awkward situations and your opponent has... Zabu on board, you need to be a little bit afraid. Oh, snap. Moon Girl with Zabu. There's Debris. Let's see how this one is going to go. How do I report score? It should be on the site. 1 0. Yeah, just report it as 1 0. Yeah. As long as you've reported it as a win, the actual score doesn't matter. But yeah, it would be 1 0. Oh, never seen before Darkhawk. There you go, Callum. There's a nice cheeky surprise. You're about to get big D hawked. Next is right underneath the card. Oh, okay. So here, Callum's just in a, a sort of do or die moment. And the problem is. There's two Dark Hawks. Are we about to see the Mystique come down? So this is going to be a tough one. The double Dark Hawks, they're not huge. There's also a chance we see like double Rock Slide happen as well in, in like Asgard. Like, double Rock Slide buffs the Dark Hawks a lot. You still have 12 power to Asgard and gain the plus 3 from Baxter building. Victor. Whoa! There was actually a retreat from Goss there. I am shocked. I honestly thought this would have gone against Callum here. I, I, this was not a strong play. You know what's probably happened? The bait worked. Because on turn 3, was it turn 3? Or turn. At some point, I think Goss thought that it was Invisible Woman, Patriot, Blue Marvel, Ultron. And it wasn't. It was Invisible Woman, Squirrel Girl, uh, Blue Marvel, Ultron. Which is definitely not as powerful. <laughs> Both players playing fairly safe. But again, just to remind everyone, as the rounds tick on, as soon as we get to round five... The cube starts snap, so it starts at two. Oh. So I always wonder, is it better to try and take control of the game earlier before the game takes control of you? Gonna be a snap here. I think that was from Callum. Gonna feel pretty confident with Misty Knight into Invisible Woman. Dude, that's deep, I know. And now this time... Callum, oh, Callum has the Invisible Woman, Patriot, Kazar, whatever. Um, Going to be interesting here from Goss, though, because that extra energy could come in clutch to do even more broken stuff later on with the Zabu.
Gonna be another Sentinel and a Korg. Not great. Whenever you play in a Zabu deck and you don't, don't get to Zabu on turn three, you're not feeling great about life. There's Ebony Cheese gonna be on the top there, maxing out uh, Goss's potential power on the left at 11. America Chavez here for Callum. Callum already in a fantastic spot. Even now, with the options of Squirrel Girl, Rock, Shocker is fine. We do have Limbo as well for a turn seven, which means Callum doesn't even have to rush. He can actually just pass a couple of turns if he wants and still have plenty of juice to go. Now we're going to work out if Callum knows how Mystique into Invisible Woman works or not. This is always the fun play. Again, already at two cubes. Which means this is like a, an extra hit. I do wonder... Maybe this is okay. This is probably okay from Callum. But I wonder with that whole two more turns, did he need to play all of this out? Maybe he did. So he knows left is locked up. The problem now is he's facing down Devil Dinosaur on the right and potentially a Devil Dinosaur power-ish equal to card in mid, which means he'll have to just go blue Marvel and hope, I think. Or maybe he blue Marvel's... Yeah, this is tricky. I think he might got caught out mid a little bit here. For me, I'm actually not sure if, like, Shocker should have been mid. Because power in, in the mid is quite low. There's the Mystique for the Devil Dinosaur level power, roughly. The Coulson helped beef this up a little bit. Going to be a quick reconnect here, I hope. There we go from Callum. Oh, uh, quick reconnect again, I hope. Callum's internet. Scottish internet. Not the best, it seems. Uh, Sentinel coming down here, keeping that Devil Dinosaur and Mystique big. And I just don't think this is going to be enough. I think the problem here is Callum just didn't pile enough power into mid and the Devil Dinosaur plus Mystique play is really strong. Going to be an end turn. This one's going to be for four Cubaronos. It's going to be four damage. Going to put one of these players in a dramatic lead here. Darkhawk joining the fray along with Sentinel to boost this back up a little bit. And that, I am 99% sure, means that Goss is going to take this game. But let's see. Couple of drones coming out there, but it looks like. Let's see. Kazar. Uh, maybe I'm underestimating this, actually. Uh, I was not underestimating this. This definitely does not look like enough. No, 21 to 29. It was a good effort. But with four damage going to Callum, pushed him down to four health now. And also, as we hit round five, it means that the cubes are going to start snapped. So we're going to start on two cubes now and start to really put some pressure on Callum. Because if Callum. If, if Goss just snaps now, Callum has to choose to either take two damage or play for four cubes. I am really surprised that Goss didn't just snap. I think that's what I would do in this situation. If you can afford to take four, you just snap and force your opponent to either go down to two or, or potentially lose the game. But we'll see. Oh! Was that the snap I imagine there from Gauss? Callum has to decide. If he doesn't play this hand, he has to play the next one. If he doesn't play this one... Oh, okay. This is going to be the last game if Callum takes the loss here because he does only have this four health left. This is the max amount of cubes he can play for. Does get the Tinker's Workshop as the last location here. Four power uh, energy, sorry. But this is going to do nothing for Callum. This hand is a giant turd and if Goss basically plays anything now he's going to be feeling good rock slide that's going to be not the worst deck to be rock slid with rocks but with this hand it's not bad i think callum has to hand dump now throw it all out play blue marvel and onslaught and hope it works This is going to be a tricky one. Because now, I, that would have to have been Patriot. I think exactly. So then it could be like Patriot, Blue Marvel, Onslaught in one location, right? But it's just going to have to be done. Blue Marvel comes down here on the Invisible Woman. Uh, Goss 
he's doing okay, but he's not super ahead. This turn will tell a lot whether there's a Dino, whether there's a Darkhawk. Because if there's either one of those, Darkhawk, there you go. Callum is in big doo-doo. Because it means that now, right location, Tinker's Workshop is almost certainly lost. And if Goss has a Mystique, a Dino, a whatever, maybe even a Soft Breeze right now, that Callum's probably going to lose one other location that he commits to. So this one's going to be a little bit rough. It might simply be over. There is squirrels coming out here that can help. Gonna be Debris, Patriot, Wasp. Okay, this is the best Callum's got. Gonna chuck all the power he possibly can. It is gonna be a good little boost of power. It doesn't, it's not 100% over. The Mystique going onto the Dark Hawk is gonna be 12 power, I believe, here. And I don't think Callum's catching up to 22, but I could be wrong. I've been known to be wrong before. Okay. No, not going to be enough. And with that, it looks like Callum takes the loss, takes all of the damage. And it looks like Goss is going to be moving on to the next round. Nice one there. That was a good one. I enjoyed that. That was a bit of a dicey one. Yeah, GG's all round. Uh, let's see if anyone else is in the next one. Let's take a look at the bracket for just a second, actually. Is this the right one? There we go. Let me refresh. Oh, it, it auto refreshed. Never mind. Uh, Snapdaddy182. I'm loving the players that are actually winning by cubes. It's the cube score versus 1 0, um, which is absolutely fine to do. I'm not sure how someone got to 9 0, though. That is simply impressive. Um, but take a look. We're already in the final, what, 2 4 6. The top eight now is going to be, or at least for now. AJ, Goz just beat Callum here, as you can see. Uh, Snap Daddy and Benjoza, uh, Dakuto and Lorak. I believe. Is Frag Daddy playing now? Maybe we can jump in. Uh, watch stream. Oh, I really need to. F okay, I I'm, I'm learning so much, guys. Oh, shit, I'm an idiot. I'm learning so much on how to broadcast this thing. Go. Let's go into a top eight match between Benjo and Frag Daddy. Uh, oh my lord, everyone hold the dog and bone. We've got a movement deck going in here now. Looks like Benjo's are starting off with the Sunspot Central Park causing issues as usual, as well as Subterranea. Not great. And Mindscape. Oh no. Can I share in Discord from iPad? I've got no clue, Quick Finger. You just have to try it. So Sunspot coming down along with Lockjaw. This deck might look familiar. I don't know if the Benjoza is going to be playing the Odin um, uh, Thor. Uh, so the Thor versions. Or going to be playing the big deck energy version. A Raven special. But yeah, this Vulture coming down here. It looks like a snap. And then instant retreat from Snap Daddy. Understandable. A little bit painful. But understandable. Take the one cube and move on. Because this matchup with Squirrels coming out. Subterranea. And Mindscape is not a location uh, setup you really want to play movement on. So this makes 100% uh, sense as we move on to round two. Only a minor disadvantage. I think early concedes in the early parts of the game are fine. It's when people start accepting snaps that things get really spicy. Gonna be an early human torch. And we didn't see many cards here. But Snap Daddy does have... I mean, Ben Joseph knows it's a movement deck because he saw Vulture. But that was it. Snap Daddy knows there's a Lockjaw in the deck. Bar with no name. Gonna be Daggett there as well. Hulkbuster into Human Torch. Benjoza. I think that snap was from Benjoza there. Well, well, well. Are we playing for eight cubes? Game two? Or round two? I need to start saying round because round is the correct terminology. We're playing. Okay. Going up to four cubes from round two. The players simply mean business. Lockjaw into Wasp. Let's see what comes out. Arrow. Okay. Didn't really have an impact there. And Arrow's gone. Limbo's going to kick it out here from the second location in the middle there. But also awkward as well. Not really Shang-Chi's-able here. Snap Daddy's going to play Vulture into Asgard to try and get the 
extra card draws this turn. It's going to be very interesting as well if Snap Daddy goes for a cloak into bar with no name to then set up a Heimdall. Oh, Jubilee into Wasp. We've all been there. And Snap Daddy does look like he's going to go cloak, bar with no name, and then Heimdall across. The only... This is good. This is a good play. The problem with it is the second cloak hits bar with no name, your opponent knows exactly what you are going to do and can therefore play around it. My only dip, my only reason I think this is good is because well, your opponent can't play into bar with no name anyway. Unless they have a random minus card, right? So, this has no impact. Both players are going to be playing for the middle. Oh, no! Leech into Heimdall. That bar now has a name. And it's called Lost. Yeah. Oh, the leech. So strong there. And if the retreat happens, that's just going to be four cubes due to a leech. Oh no, Snap Daddy takes a huge hit and suddenly only on five cubes versus a full 10. Ben Joza now could, if he wanted to, take the bully approach and he could just keep snapping. Human Torch coming down now as we get into round number three. Human Torch, Dagger, Vulture, Strange. Not bad. Or just Vulture Strange now. I would actually quite like to see Snap Daddy just give Benjoza loads of bad cards. So I think, like, give, give, him, give him Vulture. Enjoy. A player's able to switch decks mid-tournament. I said I would prefer for them not to, but I can't stop them because I can't watch every single thing. But you can't switch hands. I can, but not off the cuff like I'm doing this. I can set it up so I can switch hands, but it's a lot harder. Okay. Oh, Mirtrai's lab. I actually think Strange into Machine World. I think because Ben Joseph's playing like Lockjaw into big cards, just give, give him loads of crap cards, right? I think I would have given them... Craven. I think I would have tried to give Doctor Strange or a Vulture and just done that because at the moment, Benjo's is getting to do whatever he wants. And I think that was a snap from Benjoza, which means that Snap Daddy already now has to work out do I want to go down to four or that, excuse me, or do I want to play? Okay. It would be nice if you could do it in-game by clicking on the avatar. I mean, I'm not in-game at all. Yeah, I, I wish there was an in-game spectator mode. So this is going to be Jubilee into Lockjaw. Not going to be doing too much. But now, Snap Daddy has to work out exactly how the last turn goes. Because currently, this might just be reliant on a Heimdall. Benjoza doesn't seem too happy here. It depends what his hand is. He might have a lot of the big cards. And Lockjaw. Jubilee into Lockjaw is not really helping him out. There's also an argument where, again, Benjoza almost certainly knows there's no Killmonger. So Benjoza could probably pass, gain five power, and say you're really beating nine in Miniaturized Lab. So both streams up side to side. That takes infinitely more coordination from me, Thorium. But yes. Okay, Leech comes down. I'll be honest, it doesn't really have a big impact on this game. They've already dropped Alex Magister. Okay, Human Torch. Oh, the Retreat! 
Oh, okay. Well, it looked like Benjosa just did not have access to anything giga powerful. So, Snapdaddy got away with that one. Delta Smooth, two damage to Benjosa and starts to fight back. Going into round four now. One round away from the, the stakes being upped here. And uh, Snapdaddy, again, with the movement deck, of course. Looks like he's at least got the dagger. We didn't see the Shang-Chi before, I don't think, unless I missed. So cringe. What's cringe? Stream sniped? Wait, what? I'm so confused. Wait, what would have been stream sniped about that? Benjo's had like no power anywhere. <laughs> and he knew the cloak move was happening. Oh, is this going to be an early retreat here? So it's going to be the retreat. Snapdaddy going down to four cubes. Things are going to get a little bit dicey now. It's going to be a little bit more rough for Snapdaddy. Only on four, and the cubes start at two from round two, uh, from round five onwards. Now, uh, Vormi, not the best unless Snapdaddy can just completely ignore its ability by moving into that location. Maybe has a card like Iron Fist that can just be thrown in there without too much worry. Bar Sinister. Now this is the problem. This is the pressure with these move decks. You need a rather large brain. Because now what Snapdaddy has to do is go, okay... If I Craven Bar Sinister and Heimdall four Cravens to the left, what does that do in terms of actually winning the game? It does look like instead that Snapdaddy's going to just throw the Craven away and say, you know what, that's not going to cut it, no problemo. We did see a Hulkbuster a little bit earlier, so could go for the Multiple Man Hulkbuster setup, maybe. But we'll have to see what pulls out here. New York! Now, isn't that interesting? New York with movement decks and Vulture. Yes, I... If this... There's a double snap. We're playing for four cubes. Again, just to remind everyone, you cannot play for more cubes than the player with the lowest health has. So it is going to be four cubes. If Snapdaddy loses this, it's GG and it's game over. Benjoza moves to top four. Um, but if Benjoza loses, Snapdaddy is very much back in the game. Doctor Doom off the lockjaw, though, is going to start spreading a lot of power around. But it does soak up a bar sinister with just five power, which isn't that strong. This is huge. These vultures, or three of them at least, will move left. And then on turn six, he can move like two of them right. And then Heimdall or something. Like, this is this is scary. I am surprised Benjoza accepted a snap on triple vulture. Their uh, quad vulture, sorry. With New York on board. I am very surprised this happened. But again, we haven't seen a um, we haven't seen a Shang Chi's uh, from Benjoza. He might still win it. He might still run it. Sorry, but we've not seen it. So I think it's fair for Snapdaddy to say, "Screw this! I'm going to do what Vulture does and get big." Working out whether he wants to run Spider Man again. Need some big brain plays here. Going to choose to pass instead. There's also a world here where, like, Snapdaddy actually does the funny thing and just plays Heimdall mid. That also creates odd situations. Oh, gonna be the Shang-Chi's with the double move into New York. Makes sense. Shang-Chi's to take down Sunspot. And then just drop in five extra power mid. So I think this is... Uh, the only thing that surprises me a little bit, unless I'm missing something, is this, the Miles Morales wasn't on Vormir. Because I'm not... You would assume Ben Joe's is going to play something bar sinister. But maybe this is just good cover. Maybe, you know what, 27 power, Snapdaddy doesn't need it. I guess the Vulture and the, um, 
Yeah, maybe I would have looked at Miles on the left, but it's probably okay. It's probably okay. Going to be a move for Dr. Doom on the right, stacking a lot of power. Infinite. Well, that's a giga win mid. Snapdaddy's already won left. Big moves there from Vulture. There's the Shang-Chi on the, uh, the Sunspot. And as I said, the Miles didn't really matter in the end. It was probably an insurance policy, Miles Morales. But huge win there. And suddenly, both players down to full health each. Any snap means that the unless the retreat instantly happens, means that this will be the last game if any of the players snap. <coughs> Excuse me. It's going to be a sunspot yet again for Benjoza on the far right. Sewer system, Onslaught, Citadel. Don't really think Citadel is going to help either player out here, unless I'm forgetting about someone running something ongoing. Scorpion coming out again here from Benjoza. Just a good one-two punch there of Sunspot Scorpion. It's more often Iceman Scorpion, but Sunspot fits this deck a little bit more because you are, from the looks of it, a little bit more likely to float some of that energy. Vulture making its way into Throne Room will be the biggest Vulture known to mankind. The only thing that Benjoza has to think about in this game is Throne Room is almost certainly a loss. Right? Because he's seen now the Shang-Chi. There we go. Perfect timing. So I think now Benjoza should actually ignore Throne Room. Let Sunspot sit there and do its thing. Play for the other two locations. Because otherwise, you, he just knows. He, just, he will just lose to Shang-Chi straight up. Especially now that we can see some of this mid is getting a, like clogged up just a little bit. Vulture can move to Throne Room. And my lord, it's going to get big. It's going to be huge hit in the throne room. Oh. Snapdaddy's going to just rethink about what he wants to happen here. This is actually important as well because this affects Heimdall, doesn't it? As far as I'm aware anyway. Going to move there. Then strange the vulture back into Onslaught Citadel. And then probably go for Heimdall. Okay, changed his mind again. Running out of time. That turn timer on the right is ticking down. I did actually quite like the uh, Strange into Citadel. Oh, Stra oh, is he thinking? Oh, I think he's thinking Strange into Sewer System and then Shang-Chi's The Throne Room. <gasps> but Joseph does have a Shang-Chi. I don't think we saw it. Oh my goodness. Snapdaddy is going to respond. This is for four cubes. This is for all of the marbles if both players continue to play. Doom. <gasps> A wasp. I don't think this is going to be enough, is it? Because Doom's going to be too big. Doom's going to be the biggest card. Huge, the Doom saved the day. Snap Daddy takes the loss. Benjoza wins. But honestly, what a series. That was so insane. That was so close. Three decks, you only have to win with two. Um, but it takes way longer. Whereas I think this is a little bit more fast-paced, a little bit more fun, a little bit more exciting for me. But again, we'll see as it develops. Wait, have they started yet? Shit, I don't know if they've started yet. Oh, no, they've started. Apologies. No one told me. There we go. Apologies. We are going to be in here and it is going to be Goss versus AJ. We are in round one, so it's fine. We've not missed much. Just a couple of first turns. Zabu coming down here from Goss. We are going to see does have Darkhawk available, does have Sentinel, does have Coulson, and even the Quinjet as well. It uh, looks like he, yep, not got enough energy for that, I believe, because Golson is not reduced. I do like the Quinjet here. Bear in mind, everything is going to shimmy to the right. Meanwhile, AJ with the Devil... Uh, Daredevil, sorry, armor, and then Quinjet going to move on his own to the right. Quinjet, I think, probably came from Daily Bugle, though. Along with the Zero, actually. Yeah, so AJ's going to be playing the Zero Big Shuri deck, I imagine. Yep. 
Is that being streamed by you or tournament? Yeah, it's official production being streamed by the tournament people. Uh, I'm casting and playing in it, but not at the same time. So yeah, AJ. Just taking their time here. Look at exactly what's going to go down. Bifrost does complicate some matters. Coulson getting White Queen and Black Panther. Cosmo coming down on the left will shift to mid, of course. And now this is the little puzzle the players have to take apart here. Two turns to be able to work out how to deal with this and completely even on both sides. Goss could play zero of his own. Wait, why is it showing that? Oh, because he played Devil Dinosaur. Okay. Interesting. So I imagine here, Goz is looking at zero for the extra power mid. Oh, zero won't go off because of Cosmo. Yeah, it's just extra power. Going to drop the Devil Dino on the right. But this is going to be interesting, right? Because with no um, Shuri being played by AJ, it does mean that the, the Red Skull is not going to be that big. Gonna be a little bit big, but not that big. And now, mo most importantly, Goss equals right and has double white queen sentinel. <laughs> so we could just play everything out and basically draw right and try and win uh, the Bifrost or Daily Bugle. Was that a double snap from them? Oh, we're just we're just playing for eight cubes. Okay, <laughs> that accelerated very very quickly. We're just playing for eight cubes. Now, one card here looks like it's going to be Taskmaster for 15, which I do think means Goz will win, right? Because he'll draw on the right with getting every card recycles itself. Sentinel there goes to 15. It'll be a draw on the left. So that means I think Goz will win because he will win mid. Wait, it's Destroyer. I mean, that's the same thing. Wow. Okay. Eight cubes going over to Goz. AJ already down to two absolutely brutal and most importantly information because now goz knows okay there's a destroyer i need to think about it what does destroyer do how does it change the game because revealing that information in game in round one obviously you have to you do what you do to win but it's very important whereas if that destroyer wasn't played for whatever reason or not drawn then goss just wouldn't assume there's a destroyer in the list but eight cubes already played for now aj all the way down to two almost doesn't have an option but to play out each game he gets one retreat at one cube and that's it it's not looking great does have sunspot into armor now on the left locking out the ninjas as well from being able to be killed but there's zabu on curve it's exactly what you want and frankly why zabu's getting a nerf soon Moon Girl available now. Moon Girl. Even Moon Girl into like Dino Dino is probably okay. Battle Mode does not have featured location. It has the location in it, but it is not like extra percentage chance. Wow, there is a lot that can be done here though. A little bit surprised. Yeah, I think you play the other Dino if you're going to play Dino at all. There's no reason to float one energy when having... Like now... Uh, Goss will have the option to play Devil Dino Mystique next turn, which is huge. Oh, no. The arrow's dead. Danger room. Truly dangerous. I don't even know how where the recovery goes here. There's the snap. If AJ wants to continue, this is probably a retreat and he plays one more game and tries to hang on. I would have retreated so fast. Uh, it would be unbelievable. AJ, considering whether he can pull this one out the bag, he knows there's an extra dino uh, more than likely, he knows there's stuff that can be played. Zabu's still down. Quinjet's still down. There's a lot of shenanigans that could go on here. 
it's so much power. Dino on the left, basically a dino on the middle, roughly. And then there's that dino on the right as well. I don't think... I actually wonder if Ghost was supposed to not play the Mystique, actually. Hang on a minute. I guess it doesn't matter. It's by six. Yeah, looks like that's going to be a victory there for Cause. And that means AJ is done. Rough game there, definitely, for AJ. The eight cube round one fight. And that was... Right, we're in. <laughs> it might be the last game. Ben Joseph's on two health. <laughs> okay, and it looks like we're snapping. So Ben Jozo has to win. Sorry, I had to do that super. I did not realize they were balls deep in a game. Okay, so Dakuto doing very, very well so far. Benjozo, two health and a dream. Lockjaw needs to come in clutch. I think whoever wins this fight is going to be huge. Jubilee into Lockjaw is often a good way to get the job done. Let's see what happens. Jubilee going to kick out Chavez. That looks like it's good enough to me. Wasp going to follow up here as well. And yes, Haller has been very much won on the right side there for Benjozo. He might still be in the game. It does mean Dr. Octopus is just a 5-10 for free now, but it looks like Dakuto's going to call that a day and say, you know what? I can take two cubes worth of damage. It simply does not matter. Uh, still, Benjozo, even though, uh, you know, he did take the win there, that was only round three as well. Benjozo has a absolute mountain to climb there, being only on two health. Dakuto can still actually just take a couple of hits, depending on how the retreats go, and be very, very comfortable indeed. So basically, the advantage now is Dakuto can just keep, basically keep re-rolling the game until he gets the hand he wants, right? Nope, we're just waiting for uh, Benjozo to get ready. Probably psyching himself up for the big game. Can literally cannot drop games. I think there's one retreat in it because um because Benjozo is on two cubes and next round is round four, which means it'll still be a one cube game initially. So Benjozo can retreat once if there's not a snap, basically. Although I'm a little bit worried about this. What's going on here? Oh. Oh, oh no. Oh no. The first disconnect in official Marvel Snap tournament history, I'm choosing to believe. Has Ben Jozo DC'd? Stick it in the record box. Yeah, where were you? Where were you the day that um <laughs> that we had our first disconnect? And that, okay. I think there's 30 more seconds or so. We've got 30 seconds. Game kicked me out. Oh, no. You've got one health left, Benjoza. You can do it. <laughs> I believe. Can you not get back in fast enough? It's not giving you the option. Oh, crap. Okay, well, that means the victory is going to go to Dakuto then. Yeah, it's a shame, but what we're going to do, because I'm making up the rules, is if there's going to be DC and people can't get back in, um, we, we give the victory to the person who's not DC'd, right? So Dakuto does take the victory there and is going to move on to the finals. So just update the bracket. Um... I think there is a reconnect though. It's just Benjozo couldn't it couldn't work. I'm sure someone said there was a reconnect. I'm sure. But yeah, Dakuto is gonna be moving on to the finals. I'm sorry about that, Benjozo, but believe it or not, with the speed we're doing these, we can run more. So it'll be fine. So yeah, if you wanna just uh, put your score in. New mode T yeah, can't. I'm glad you're here. Someone, at least one person, knows the pain <laughs> of running stuff.
Yeah, it was a good effort though, Ben Jozo. I, I did have hope. Uh, I guess I'll fill this in. Okay, there we go. So we are on the grand finals of Raven's Marvel Civil, well, Snap Civil War 1. I just made up the name on the spot this morning. It's going to be Goss versus Dakuto. Uh, and I believe we can still... Oh, crap. Have we already... <gasps> Good timing by me. I'm such a pro. We're in. A game or round one. I need round one. Round one. I need to get my words correct if I'm going to be uh, good at this. Round one does mean there that Dakuto is actually going to lose the Goblin. It's a bit of a shame there. Does have Hood into Viper though. The old one-two puncheroo. And we lost uh, Colson, was it? Or was it Darkhawk? It was Dehawk? Okay. Sentinel going to come down here for Goss on the mid location. Just shoring up. <laughs> Dakuto to take a look at the shiny Sentinel. It's going to shore up Monster Island just a little bit. You always want to be, or at least I like to be, a little bit Shang-Chi proof on Monster Island just by chucking something there, even if it's small. Uh, oh, the Polaris to move the hood, reducing down that power. But there is the Zabu on three. That is the huge, huge option there for... Um, for Ghost Dakuto gonna drop down the debris though. Bit of a bit of a cheeky bugger, isn't he? Dakuto, you can tell by the deck list. There's Titania, Doctor Octopus, Debris. Like just a lot of mess. Snapping gonna come down now. Nice and early. Gonna be a round one snap. Who's gonna take the cubes? Or is there gonna be an easy, quick retreat here? Take the one damage and go. And it looks like Goss is gonna take the one damage, call it a day, and move swiftly on to round two. Again, with the discard and with everything going up like that is uh, kind of rough. Gonna be moving on to round two, opening hand. Not too bad there for Dakuto. Mojo World, always an interesting one, especially when we look at the fact that like debris is being played. I don't think either player is actually running Killmonger um, in their lists, just from glancing at them. So I do think that, you know, this Korg is fairly safe on Mojo World for now. Oh, the rock straight off the top. A little bit awkward. Kuto going to play Debris. Wow, has Goss had Zabu on curve every game? Because that's insane. Oh, Sokovia. Sokovia strikes again. Going to be Mojo on Mojo World. I mean, if you think about it, it just makes sense. But there's not a lot of resources, not a lot of power guaranteed here for Dakuto. Uh, this might be one he's just tentatively playing out. And as soon as there's any kind of danger or snapping potential, he might just uh, take a bit of a moonwalk straight out of this round. It's going to be a snap there. Is Dakuto saying he'll play? D Dakuto's just playing. Okay. Uh, weirdly enough, the Green Goblin is going to start doing odd things, right? Green Goblin flicks Goblin plus Titania to Goss's location. This is big brain because then it means whenever Dakuto wants, probably on the last turn, that you can just play one card in Mojo World, gain the Titania, and then win, the w win Mojo World guaranteed. I think the only way this doesn't quite work is if... Goss plays a card in Mojo World now, which he did not. Okay. This does work, right? And then... The Titanium flips. Doesn't it? Yes. Okay. So now, this is kind of nice, right? So Goss is locked out of Mojo World. Oh, wait. No, he doesn't have enough cards there. Oh, Polaris to try and pull a Korg? This is getting really weird. I don't think this works now because one, one pulls, two throws, three wouldn't work. Yeah, I guess he's just doing this to get more than six power. This is fine. But he needs to play three cards altogether. Dehawk going to go mid. Polaris does mean it's not going to pull anything mid now. And I think Dakuto is in giga trouble. Oh, this is just an L. I think this just did not work out well. A 
This has to be a retreat. Uh, Dekuto cannot just take eight here. It's a guaranteed loss. Does he win Mojo World if he plays Rock? Oh, maybe Rock left, Shang-Chi mid? Shang-Chi mid, Rock left, Rock left flips the Titania, it's three each, but the five has more. Yeah, that would have actually been a, a go, right? That would have actually been a bit of a go. Damn, oh, it's a tough one. It's Like I said, the Titania, it's too big brain. It's too big brain. No one can control that card. Makes it 3v3, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, gonna be a TVA game. Okay, TVA. Viper coming down versus the Quinjet. Gonna take that one step ahead. A few different ways to play TVA. You either contest cards at your locations that your opponent already has cards on to try and, like, push them out and bully them. If you have a card that can spread a little bit. Here, though, it will be interesting if Green Goblin now goes left or right. If that's what the Guto wants to do. Oh... Okay, Polaris on Shuri's lab is busted on TVA. Three energy, ten power, pull the Quinjet off TVA. I am shocked this isn't a Snapple. It's a Snapple. I'm not shocked anymore. It makes sense. Yeah, this is going to be six power here on this play with the Sentinel, but I don't think it matters, right? Because now Dakuto just has options. Or not. Because now, the goblin's a little bit scary. Huh. Debris? And sunspot left. Okay. If there's a big four drop. But what could there be, actually? I don't think Goss has big four drops. Because Darkhawk doesn't get... Darkhawk doubles power to two from one, right? So that doesn't work like that. Goblin on lab. Goblin will minus six, but the problem is if Goz played something on lab first th th this turn, Goblin just definitely losing the game. And it looks like that's actually going to be a concede there. Round four, one round away from the doubling cubes. Takuto definitely on the back foot, but we've seen how quickly this can go around. Like if they play for eight cubes and, and Takuto wins the eight cubes, then Goz is dead. Quinjet going to come out nice and early there for Goz as well. Titania, again, the big brain plays. Got to work out exactly how to use that Titania to his advantage on that side. Sentinel going to come out there now. Again, Sentinel, one of my favorite cards, honestly. Just good at just throwing power out regularly. You always have something to play if you have Sentinel. Problem here is, does Debris achieve that much? I don't think Debris has a huge impact uh, against Goss's deck because it is just pretty much the Devil Dino, Dark Hawk, you know, a couple of big things deck. So you don't need tons of space. Wait, is this the final? This is the final. This is the final. And it's coming. It's getting close. It's getting close. Monster Metropolis is an interesting one when you have Shang-Chi in hand, because if you just wait and wait and wait, there just will be something with more than ten uh, more than uh, nine health. Because of the way the plus three power works. Why Debris Washington? Surely you want the rock in that lane? Well, your opponent also gets the rock in that lane, so it doesn't actually do anything. Now, though, Dakuto is just, uh, you know, closing up Monster uh, Metro. Dr. Schmoctopus on the left. There's not a lot of room to pull. And now the big question is, like, the, the, I said about uh, Goss not really needing a lot of room, but... With that Polaris pulling two rocks to a location, it really does limit what Goz can do. The benefit, though, is if Dekuto is winning, 
going into this next turn. I am Iron Okay. Colson maybe just came in Giga Clutch. <laughs> Actually. Wait, who's got priority? Oh, Dakuto's got priority. That's so rough. I think he would have loved to go second, Shang-Chi right, and then play something left. This might still be good enough. This is probably still good enough, actually. Gamora Titania on the last turn, probably good. This game may need viewers view, as I think viewing one hand is like cheating. Wait, why is it cheating? If we were doing it seriously, I, there'd just be a stream delay. It wouldn't matter. Okay. I think this is probably good enough. It's going to be a retreat there from Gus. He knows he can't keep up. Because the problem is, he has to play something mid. And if he plays something mid, there's probably not much to play elsewhere. And Dekuto needed three power in Washington, D.C. To, to be able to take that as well. So a bit of a rough one overall. Another TVA and Kamataj now. Okay. This gets kind of interesting. Now... I found that people will always play into the left location on TVA first, so I like this throw onto the right. I'm definitely going to be proven wrong now as both players will end up playing on the right. I knew it. Okay, you're going to be. Debris options look quite good. Green Goblin on Baxter Building also looks absolutely fine to me. Ooh, aggressive snap here from Goz on the TVA game. And this is going to get spicy. We are in round five, so we were on two cubes already. The snap's going to go up to four. And this is going to put a lot of pressure. They are going to play it out. Whoever takes this, oh no, he's going to have a lot of pressure. Zabu is not what you want to see on turn three of a snapped TVA game. If I was Dakuto now, I would be terrified. Next turn, playing for six. Next turn means we're playing for all the marbles. If both players agree. I mean, Zabu isn't that bad. What? On TVA, you can just play two four drops? That's quite strong. You think, like, Darkhawk um, and, like, Rock Slide doesn't just win? Oh, my lord. We're doing it. Darkhawk on the right. Only 11, though. It's going to go up with Rock Slide. Just like I said, Rock Slide Darkhawk is going to be enough. And I think that not only takes Dakuto out of this game, but also crowns Goss as the champion of the Snap Civil War 1. Huge congratulations. That was a big victory there as Goss takes it. GG's all round. Thanks everyone for playing. Goss is the champion. And who would have thunk it? The Dark Hawk uh, and mainly Zabu deck did very, very well.